Yo, what's good with you on today's video? I got the how to make a tower defense game. Don't even ask me what part this is. I believe this is um I think this is part eight, I believe. I think yeah, yeah I think this is part eight, because I'm pretty sure yeah, this is part eight. So in this video, as you can tell by the title, um I'm gonna include unit information or unit stats i should say but same thing so th that includes you know damage range and cooldown and stuff right so we're going to kind of rework the way uh units the way uh the units do damage the range and all that stuff it's not going to be set just to one value now it's going to be based off of whatever you set for that specific unit so as you can see we're in the lobby place i'm sorry not in the lobby we are in the the place with the waves and stuff like that so not the lobby right and there's not really much there's not it won't take long it's be like a 10 15 minute video and stuff so yeah um thank you guys for all the love and support you guys been showing the channel you already know showed continue to show the tower defense series lots of love and i will continue to keep dropping more and more videos on it let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so first things first we need to of course create a unit uh information display system so what i mean by that is you guys know when you're playing tower defense when you place a unit on the ground you know how like if you if you click on it um yeah you know how if you click on it right you can pull up the information on a uh, unit like it'll pop up on a ui it'll show like you know the damage the radius and the name of it and all that stuff so yeah i'm gonna make that just a little differently i'm gonna make it so when you right click on it but you guys can make it when you left click it's up to y'all but i'm gonna just do it where you right click the only reason i wanted to do it like that was because um i didn't want to mix both of these in because then it may think i'm trying to place a unit when i'm just trying to uh when I'm just trying to, uh, so what's it called? Just trying to get the information on a unit. So yeah, first things first, let's start off with the UI. So open up Core GUI. You're gonna want to insert a new frame. So boom, regular frame to Core GUI. You're gonna drag it. You want it to be like over to, over here to the left. As for sizing, uh, I went with 250 by 250, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what I want. I'll drag it up a little bit. Right. It doesn't need to be, yeah, it doesn't need to be gigantic or anything. So I'll make the background color nice, um, a nice light blue. Um, I'm insert a UI corner. This is optional. Right corner, set the corner radius to zero, 0 by 15. You're going to want to rename this frame to unit info frame, right? So then from here, we're gonna want to insert a text label. So boom, a text label. You can just drag this to the top in the middle. This is going to be the uh, the name of the unit and stuff that's displayed. So control D, I'm gonna duplicate the UI corner, throw it into the text label. So you're gonna wanna rename the text label to, I believe it was called, yeah, unit name text label, right? And obviously you don't need any text by default. You do not need, you do not need any text by default. Um, I went with text color. I went with white for text color. Text stroke, text stroke is uh, color is black. Text stroke transparency is set to zero. And you already know bold text, bold text, rich text, scale text. And then the background, I just made it a darker blue. Kind of just um, I made it very similar to how it looks in Twilight Tower Defense. So then let me set this so it's like it looks like kind of dark. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So we have our unit name text label. And then what we can do is we can duplicate this. So we can say control D and then we're going to go down. The difference is with this, instead of it like being centered, what you're going to do is make this so that it's just like a line going across. So we'll adjust the sizing. Um, well, you guys can put this in any way you want. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you make sure you have all of the text labels and the text button and then the names match. You guys can really put this wherever you want. Choose the colors and all that stuff. That, that doesn't matter for this, but yeah. So I think I did like two fit. Yeah, I think two fit. Yeah, two fifty fits. So then I'm gonna just put it right so that it covers the whole thing. And then I only need it to be like by thirty. Or yeah, I think thirty is good. Or no, maybe it should be forty. I'm thinking maybe. maybe no, yeah, never mind. We'll just do thirty. So then, what you're gonna rename? You're gonna rename this to. Uh, we're gonna do the stats. So we'll say range text label, right? So then we're going to control D, control D. So you can duplicate it twice. You're going to drag one right under it, then drag another one uh, right under that one. So for the middle one, I'm just going to change the color back to the bright blue, or the, sorry, the light blue and stuff. So that like you see it's spacing. It's, it looks like as, if it, as if there's a space. So then I will change the second one. Um, We can make this cool. 
down text label right and then for the third range one um i'm gonna set this to damage text label we can display how much damage stuff like you know the minimum and maximum that's also another thing added added minimum and maximum damage and stuff so it won't be a set amount for uh, how much they're going to damage their opponents then lastly we're just going to insert a text button this will be our close button so insert a text button you guys can rename this to close text button right then you already know we'll do 50 by 50 once i find the sizing okay so 50 by 50 i already know bold text Scale text, rich text, set the text equal to just an X. Then I'll set the text color to red, background, or sorry, text stroke transparency set to zero, and then, you know, the color will be black. Then I'll make the background transparency the same thing, same color, just like that bright blue. Put it off to the side and then throw the UI corner. So duplicate it, throw the UI corner in, and then boom, right? Just like that, we are ready to go. So we have finished setting up the UI. Make sure you named everything just as, as I have. And then we are done here. So by default, of course, you want to disable the frame. You don't want it to be visible. And then server storage, here's where our changes come into play. So first things first, we don't need unit prices. We no longer need unit prices anymore and stuff, right? Or well, we do need unit prices, but we don't need a folder and stuff. I'm going to have all of the units information inside of the unit itself. The reason for that is so that it can be accessed on both the client and the server. So we can pretty much just delete uh, the unit prices folder. Literally, we, we don't really need to take anything from it. So inside of each unit, what you're going to want to do is you're going to insert a couple of number values, right? So just click the plus number value. Then you can duplicate this about like four. Like you need like five values total. So for the first one, we're going to say max damage. So I'm pretty sure you guys know in tower defense games or toilet tower defense to be exact. There is a maximum damage and a minimum damage. It's going to uh when you when a unit is about to damage somebody it's going to calculate and choose a number between that range and then it's going to decide like okay like it's going to choose a random number between that range and then it'll you know it'll deal that damage it won't be like okay five damage every time it'll be like between five to 25 as an example so you set your max damage and stuff so it's to be your maximum um so i guess we're going upward to like 50 for this then then we come down here and we have min damage which is short for minimum damage so for here we could drop as low as like i don't know 15 right and then we go to the next one so it'll pretty much start here and then go here so it'll be a number between it'll be a number between 15 and 50 right so then moving on we have the price and stuff so you would just set this to whatever you know your prices are so i'll set this to 30 then for our next value we have range oh sorry this is actually our last one we only need oh sorry we only needed four so we can delete that last one so then we have the range and stuff i'm gonna set this to 12 and then boom then you can just duplicate this select it control c or just right click and copy and then you want to drop this into the other unit so paste into and then you can just set it accordingly so i'll make this a better unit so we'll increase the damage by five, each by five of course we'll increase the price um and increase the range as well right and then boom just, just like that we are done with all the stuff on the server storage side now we can move back to uh i think oh to so the local script yes so for the local script here's what you're going to do you're going to click the arrow right here you know the mouse button one thing you're going to press enter then you're going to say else if literally the same thing so input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot this time mouse button two and not processed enter and then what you're going to do here is right um you're going to create a variable you're going to say local target is equal to player get mouse dot target right so this would be whatever instance the player is you know their mouse is currently hovering over and stuff so what you're gonna you're gonna set up an if statement you're gonna say if target is nil equal to nil because obviously you don't proceed if it's nil which means the player is like their mouse is like it's like just in the sky or something like there's no object in the mouse in the view of the mouse and then of course we need to check to make sure that it's uh, also a unit so we'll say and target that parent because remember whatever it's whatever um uh, it's making contact with is one of the body parts not the unit itself it's making contact with like the human and root part the left arm the right arm so yeah so we need to do find first child and then you could choose any one of the uh stats so you so i'm gonna just do cooldown but you guys could do you know minimum damage uh max damage it doesn't really matter 
an enter, then you're going to create a variable. So you're going to say local unit. So this is the actual unit itself. So you're just going to say target dot parent. Then we're going to start setting the UI element stuff. So core GUI dot unit info frame that unit name text label that text is equal to, of course, unit dot name, right? Let me scroll down a little. Then this time, we're gonna, uh, oh my bad. This time we're going to go core GUI that unit info frame dot range text label that text is equal to invitation marks range colon space dot 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 then you're going to say unit dot range dot value right and then we're just going to we're going to repeat this process core gui dot unit info frame this time cooldown text label dot text is equal to quotation marks cooldown colon space dot 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 then unit dot cooldown dot value right and then damage is a little different so we're going to need to say core gui dot unit info frame that damage text label that text is equal to in quotation marks damage colon space dot 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 so for here we're going to say unit dot min damage dot value and then we're going to say dot 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 quotation marks space dash space we're going to put a dash so we can so it signifies you know it's uh it's going it's a range between this number and that number so the minimum and the maximum then another dot 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 then this time unit dot max damage dot value right and then we're going to say core gui dot unit for frame dot visible is equal to true we're going to make it visible and then set up the function for that the player is able to close it the core gui dot unit for frame dot close text button dot mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter you're then just going to say core gui dot unit for frame dot visible is equal to false right and then just like that guys we're done with the local script like i said it was not going to take us long at all then we move on to the server script to make a few changes. Um, as you can tell, all like the actual viewing the info stuff is actually um it's all handled on the client side. But all I'm doing on the server side is just editing stuff since we now have proper stats for all the units and stuff in it and we move things. That's all I'm doing. So I'm gonna scroll down um until we get here. Like I said, delete the unit prices folder, we no longer need it, right? And then now we get into the changes. Okay. So here, what we're going to do is you're going to change unit prices to just units, the units folder. Then um, this is the same unit name. All you're going to do is just add the dot price, that value. Come down here and do the same thing. So units, unit name, dot price, dot value, right? That's simple. Then we come down here and then we, we make some changes, right? So what we're going to do first is um something. Oh, yeah, I'm not. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here so you guys saw how we had the set range to 20. No, now it's going to be based off of the specific units range. So I'm going to say unit dot range dot value and stuff because each unit will have its own uh, individual range and then also damage. So instead of it being 25 every time, we're going to also we're going to set up a math dot random. So it's going to choose between the minimum and maximum. So we'll say unit, uh, sorry, unit dot min damage. The nice but damage damage dot value comma unit dot max damage dot value right then it'll choose a value between it'll choose a value between that range then we come down here the task that way this is the cooldown in between um uh them shooting and stuff like how long they have to wait before they can you know shoot the enemy and stuff so again cooldown will be different for each unit so cooldown i mean unit dot cooldown that value right that we're done here we're really just making some adjustments then down here i was experiencing an error and stuff like where it was saying like it, it was it, like for some reason this it was returning a table even though i thought it would only give me a single instance since there should only be one player inside of the server and stuff but yeah so that clearly wasn't working so i had to kind of redo this so what we're going to do is right we're going to do this i'm going to press enter put a space right and then we're going to set up a 4 i v in pairs so we're going to say 4 i comma v impair oh my bad impairs and then you're just gonna say game dot players get children enter right and then you can copy and paste this the player dot enemy amount part control c control v delete the delete the player variable and then change player to v because you know we're getting all the players instances and then you're gonna come down here copy and paste the if statement control c right uh delete space put it inside of the 4IV and pairs loop, control V, and then you're going to, of course, move the, this 4IV and pairs loop since we already got all the players, delete that, and then remove that over, and then boom. So 
if they have less, it's still the same. If, if they have uh, less health, it'll just send them back to the lobby. And then, um, yeah, that's actually it. Like, how long did that even, yeah, that really, like I said, literally 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, y'all already know the drill. Um, now we go, now we go and test. Okay, so, okay, let's go ahead and do this. So now we test. So you guys already know, make sure you publish. So make sure you already know, make sure you published, uh, go find your game on the Roblox website. And then, you know, you got to go through the lobby. Then we have to get back to the, uh, then we have to get back to the wave place. So yeah, as always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts and models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Highly recommend them. And shout out to all of my Discord members and uh, channel members. I really do appreciate y'all. Stuff or um so yeah we're gonna go ahead and teleport over make sure you select units before you go over there so that you can uh test to make sure that the unit uh stats display system works because we're testing uh we're testing just to make sure that the wave system is working correctly since we just made some changes to it and to how it's like retrieving information so we're just testing to make sure everything works the units do damage the enemies are responding everything just is working smoothly okay so i'm gonna vote easy right so okay the enemies are spawning it reduced the money properly. Um, how did it not? I'm I'm kind of confused. How did it not? Am I tripping? Because I I, like, I swear it should have damaged him. Hmm. I, we, yep. We, I knew I did something wrong. Well, on second, let's go ahead and let me look at something else. Oh, this isn't working either. Huh. Okay. So we f so we f nine. Let's see. Server cooldown is not a valid member of. What? so if i right click oh unit display isn't working either interesting okay cool down cool down got about member of older server storage here. line 91 and 68 okay so let's go back and let's look i'm confused did i not um oh i must oh my god I said it to the wrong. I still have the wrong place ID. Oh my god, I didn't realize that. Okay, so let me open the asset manager. So I'm just gonna uh, update my asset ID. This is just because I moved the place over and stuff. You guys don't have to do this. This is just because I moved the place over and I forgot I did that. But anyway, um, okay. So it turns out we actually forgot. Wait, how did I forget the cooldown? Oh, we, we forgot to do this. Oh, I I knew it. I knew it was five values. So that's my bad, guys. So just go over to the units, duplicate one of them, rename it to cooldown, and then uh, set the cooldown. So for this, I'm gonna just say one second. For this right for attack helicopter. I'm gonna go over to camera helicopter, duplicate, set their their cooldown to two seconds, and then rename this to cooldown. There we go. So that was the issue. Um, not totally sure why this. But like this should have still worked though. That's what's confusing me because like I'm pretty sure this should have still worked regardless. As if target. Oh, oh my god! I just realized. Of course it didn't work. It just occurred to me. We just created the cooldown and it's searching. I just realized. Yeah, we're searching for something that we, that uh it didn't have and stuff. So that actually makes sense. So make sure you make the necessary adjustments that I just made. Um, publish and then just come back. And then we're just gonna go back and then test again. Yeah, I hate messing up with the Tower Defense series stuff because it's like testing stuff for this. For this series is just, it is a lot. Like you got to literally come to the place, wait to load in for create a server. Um, then you got to wait like 30 seconds to teleport over and stuff. Yeah, testing is annoying with the Tower Defense series, but I still got to do it. Okay, so it should be teleporting me any second now. Let's see. And we are on the way. Okay. We're here. All right. Start the wave. Okay. I'm going to put a unit down. Okay. There we go. It's, do it's doing damage. Perfect. Okay. It's dealing damage. It has its own cooldown. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. So as you guys, as you guys can see, it opened it when I right click. So if I right click, nothing's happening. But if I right click above a unit, you guys will see it will display the name of said unit as well as, you know, their stats, range, cooldown, and damage um wait am i missing something is it range cooldown and oh yeah no, no no yeah name range cooldown damage okay yeah and then if i right click another one it will oh it's supposed to wait oh okay there we go there we go it... oh yeah i forgot since, it... since it's a wall right here it's an invisible wall that's why i wasn't going to do it but yeah and then close work so yeah 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I will continue uh, dropping more tower defense tutorials as long as you guys continue to show the uh, series love and support. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.